All right, <clears throat> now we are dealing with chapter 34 of uh, uh, Mounts' uh, grammar. And we got two more chapters to follow this, chapters 35 and 36. We'll get to, for those next week. Uh, that will be the uh, the week after Thanksgiving is the time for that. The uh, uh, This chapter is about the indicative of didomi. Didomi is a one of the me verbs. The ending is in mu iota. And uh, it is a... a a class of verbs that are quite different from the omega uh, conjugation, but uh, uh, there are some similarities between the two. Uh, as uh, uh, Mounts points out, we want to uh, uh, note that they seem to be very irregular, but they really are not all that irregular. Uh, the The problem is that, I mean, the, the uh, endings are not very different than the other verbs that we have studied. Uh, there are not very many of these verbs, but the problem is they're the ones that do occur, occur so often and that you, you have a lot of them in the New Testament. So it is important to learn to recognize and translate them rather than trying to memorize all of the... Uh, uh, all of the uh, different uh, forms and endings and so forth. So learn the vocabulary. That's the important thing. And once you learn the vocabulary, you should be able to work through the endings and recognize uh, with both the endings and the context uh, what, uh, what these are. When I learned these verbs many years ago, our, both the Greek, all three, in fact, of the Greek instructors that I had uh, suggested that we not not try to do a lot of memorization on these, but simply learn the vocabulary, memorize the vocabulary, and then learn to recognize and, and translate these from the endings and from the context. What Mounts does for us that is very helpful is he gives us five rules for these. And uh, these five rules we need to learn. Learn them, but also copy them and put them in your notebook and keep them with you. And then concentrate, as I said, on learning the, vo the vocabulary and learning to recognize these. The rules are listed in sections 34.6 through 34.10. And the rules are, uh, if you read carefully these sections and memorize these rules, rule one is me verbs reduplicate the initial stem letter using an iota. So reduplication is similar to the perfect tense, but uh, this is true in, in uh, all, of the, all of the me verbs. And uh, it, instead of being uh, reproduced with an epsilon uh, in between the two consonants, it's an iota, and that makes them stand out very easily. The other thing that makes them stand out is the ending, it's a mu iota ending. Uh, then rule two is me verbs do not ordinarily have a connecting uh, vowel. You remember in the in the uh, omega conjugation that you had the omicron, uh, 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 epsilon, epsilon, omicron, epsilon, omicron as the thematic vowel or connecting vowels uh, in these conjugations. You don't have that generally in the me verbs. Third rule is me verbs use three different personal endings that are different than the present active indicative. And you can see that clearly in the in the paradigm at section 34.8. So I would encourage you to read that. Wouldn't try to memorize it, but just, uh, just look at it and, and take note of it. You'll also need to learn uh, the endings or, or rather recognize, learn to recognize the endings in both paradigms in uh, 34.8. The fourth rule is the stem vowels of me verbs can lengthen, shorten, or drop out. And that's what makes them look so irregular because there can be a lot of, a lot of changes. Again, it's because of the, of the letters uh, and, and it is because of the, of the fact uh, of the pronunciation. That, that's what it's all about. And then rule five is most of the me verbs Aorist me verbs use kappa alpha 
as the tense formative. You remember uh, the kappa as the uh, sign of the perfect tense, but these are known as kappa aorist, and uh, and it's in the it's in the aorist tense uh, that you're going to see. Now he gives you a practice on these on page 323, and I encourage you to go through that. Uh, because it will help you to learn to recognize some of the most common of these me verbs. So pay attention to the summary of the chapter as a, as a review. Learn the five rules of the me verbs. Do exercise 34, uh, which would include parsing 1 through 10, and then translating sentences 1 through 6. So let's look at the, uh, look at the vocabulary, if we might, that is at the end of uh, chapter 34, starts on page 323, and the first of these is the verb didomi, and then you have uh, a uh, noun, uh, ethnos, it means nation or Gentiles, it can be translated either way, and then you have uh, loipas on page uh, 324, and uh, uh, Moses, that's Moses, and then paradidomi, very interesting word. I'll come back and talk about that in just a minute. Uh, pipto uh, is a word that means I fall, and then uh, huparko, which means I am or I exist. So you want to make sure that you learn these uh, vocabulary words. This word paradidomi, uh, I would just uh, mention that it's used... Uh, uh, pretty often it means to hand over or to hand alongside. You can see the combination of para and uh, then the verb didomi. And uh, it's used uh, pretty often in connection with the death of Jesus. I think it's very interesting. I wrote an article at one time uh, about this in Biblical Illustrator uh, because it was significant to me that this is the word that's used to describe the betrayal of Judas. Judas handed him over uh, to the Jews. It's also used of the Jews when they handed him over to Pilate using the same word. Some, some of the forms vary a little bit, but the word's the same. And then Pilate, it's the same word is used of him where he handed over Jesus to the soldiers uh, to be crucified. And then uh, finally, uh, ultimately in the life of Jesus, it's used by him on the cross in John 19, uh, where the text says that uh, he uh, bowed his head and handed over his spirit to the Father. So it is, uh, it, it kind of leads up to uh, the role of a number of people in the crucifixion, but the ultimate role of Jesus. There are also some other interesting uses of it. Paul in Romans talks about the fact that he has been handed over for our transgression. God has done this uh, for our transgression and has been raised for our, uh, our righteousness or, or making, us, making us righteous, completing that process. And then Paul uses that word again when he says that, that Jesus will, in the consummation, hand over the kingdom to God. So it's a very significant word used a lot in, in, the, uh, in the New Testament. So I would encourage you to, uh, to take a look at it and be sure that you that you learn something about it. All right. Uh, in in review, then you will need to do uh, your um, your uh, translation parsing one through ten and translation verses one uh, line, uh, sentences one through six. And then this is your last quiz uh, this week, and uh, it it comes from chapters thirty three and thirty four. So you need to memorize your imperative endings for the active and middle passive, to, te, to, san, sto, se, sto, san, and then learn the five rules for the me verbs. You need to, need to learn those as well. And so we'll come back and, and do one more video on the last two chapters. We'll do that for next week.